occurring to the fact that most kiddie shows have turned up dead ends. One show, Candle Cove, has made an impact here. I made myself hunt down whatever cast remained to the show, regardless of their fear. I wanted to know everything about this show, but in the process, I came to understand that there hid something much darker about it than just what I was told and what I had heard. I have posted some of my thoughts into this recording at points to have a feel for the interviewees here. You may notice that a censor will appear. I did that so no one would bombard me with questions and such. It's a privacy thing, and I'm sorry if I offended any of the listeners. But with that, I present to you this page in the lore. Candle Cove Experiences. Tales of the Laughing Stock. Day One. My first knowing of the Candle Cove lore came out in the Net Nostalgia Forum. However, many of the episodes have never been found, and many of the props either long gone or spread over the world. However, after this mention of the show, I had to dig further into it. I mean, what I discovered over my round trip was something dark residing within the studio itself. The show, originally called Pirate Place, was loosely based on an old, quite lost short story called The Knickerbocker's Tale from 1767, about a little Irish boy arriving to a land of pirates to find his way back home. The story's writer, a man believed to be named Colin Cochrane, vanished into the dark. Stories about it say that he was a madman who married well and had a daughter who vanished without a trace near his home. This inspired him to write the story and shortly after, he was found dead by his wife. The story was lost for several years until 1970, when a local TV station in Ashland found the rights to the story and converted it to a children's television series. I managed to find some of the studio workers, but none of them were able to tell me about it. Well, there was one. Day two. Asking this woman to nearly relive her nightmare of 1971 was a near impossible possibility, but thankfully she decided to, reluctantly, anyways. Okay, miss... I'm not comfortable giving you my last name or my first. Okay, then. Mind if I call you Jane? No, I don't. Okay, then. Well, Jane, I understand you had a part in the kitty show, Cattle Cove, correct? Set designer, well... Part of it. I helped in the construction of the laughing stock and many of the characters as well. I see. Uh, was it a good experience? Oh, very. It was a great one, until the end of the show itself. How so? Well, that damn Grimes. That's what it was. Grimes? Emerson Grimes, the show's director? Is there another Grimes you know of on the series? Here she lit a cigarette. Something that, from her appearance and fear of Grimes foretold, I actually expected from her. Well, how did he manage to scare you? How did he... He was a nut job, a loony. He forced a five-year-old girl to near heat stroke, changed scripts... Everything was fine until the show grew darker and darker. How dark was it getting? When a skeleton named the Skin Taker proclaims the reason for his mouth to move weird is for grinding your skin you will have some problems. Kremps was insane, but the last straw was the last episode of the series. Now this I kind of knew about. The infamous question to the skin taker and his answer to Janice. One known caption of the original episode added by Ishmael Donald. I knew about this and moved on to her designs of the show. She explained that... It was a damned kitty show, and it turned into a puppet show from hell overnight. <sighs> I think we're done here. Wait, one last question. Do you know anything about the surviving members of the cast? There are a few of them still around, but you'll have to find them on your own. Day 3 I did, however, manage to find Jody Silver, who played Janice on the show. Now an adult of 45, she resides with her husband, Damon Lewis, and her two kids. If you see her now, she lost all that childhood spunk that she used to have on the show. 
She works as a writer of pirate stories and haunted mysteries. I managed to record, on tape, an interview with her. Um, are you Miss Jody Silver? Why, I haven't been called that in years. Yes, I'm Jody Silver, but people call me Jody Lewis nowadays. Oh, sorry about the mix-up. I'm I'm working on a book on an old kitty show that you used to be- Jesus Christ, please tell me you're joking! It was here that I noticed that she seemed agitated at the sound of a book being written on something she was trying to put behind her. It's no joke, Miss Lewis. Well, I won't warn you that you're a total nutcase for doing it. The show has given me bad dreams, ruined my childhood. I've even had therapy because of it. I don't wish to speak about it. Please, Jody. Just one interview. That's all I'm asking for. Just one. Hell, if you have to go through therapy again for it, I'll personally pay out of pocket. It was here she stood long and hard. <sighs> Christ. Fine, fine. Meet me here for an interview. And with that, she handed me a card with her address on it. I promised that she won't regret this, but I had a feeling she already was. Day four. Hello there, Miss Lewis. Well, hi there. Come on in. Her house wasn't big, but not small either. I could tell she had little ones running around from the sounds of kitty shows floating faintly from the television set and many toys scattered about. It, it was like trying to walk through a forest of mousetraps without setting one off. Eventually, we got to a small dining area of the home, a good outlook over the water, a place to dream dreams. Okay, now, um, about the show. Well, it started out as a dream come true. I was a huge fan of shows like Jumbo Circus and Sunshine City and Fisherman Fred that I really wanted to be on a kiddie show. I got my wish when the studio was looking for a young girl to play the role of Janice for their new show. And sure, there were many little girls who wanted the role so bad, so I did my best to win the studio over. Which happened. I loved the idea of the show. I did my best to do everything right. Turned out you should be careful what you wish for. Why is that now? I don't really want to tell you, but I must. You see, on set, some changes started happening. Grimes would change scripts, things seemed to be a bit scary. And for the first episode to seem so mean and such was odd for a kid's show. And then that horrible last episode. What episode? Uh, you mean the last episode of the first season? Wow, you really need to brush up on your history of this. There were two seasons of the show. The final episode of the second season was the worst ever. I tentatively and carefully asked her to tell me. Screams. Huh? Just screams. Everyone screaming and that sick man Grimes destroying the sets. He told everyone just to scream. And loudly, many did. It got to the point where one of the actors, the man who played the skin taker, started to bleed. He nearly choked on his own blood. I bawled my eyes out. It was there that she started to cry. All of those memories came back to her. She asked me to stop, and I did. I explained I was very sorry to bring back these memories. I never meant that as my intention. I remember the skin taker. He hung, his head tilted and low, his jaw hanging from one socket, and parts of his arms torn off. Day 5. I left to go find Michael Collin, and when I came across the yard sale, I know, creepy pasta ish, right? But I asked them about some old recording tapes I saw, and they said they were mostly shows for their son when he was young. I noticed that some of them were candle coves, although very smudged and probably in horrible condition. I bought the videos from them anyway. Now, it's probably here where you would expect me to say that I popped in the tape and evil shit happened, blah blah blah, yada yada. Satan appeared and threatening to rape my soul and Pirate Percy came at me in a dream as a cannibalistic demon, something like a creepypasta event, right? That's not the case, folks. I popped it in. Sure enough, static. 
but eventually, it came on. Sure, it was jumpy, and it was a static juncture, but it was the show nonetheless. It was an odd first show, being that Janice was made fun of so horribly, and that Percy would proclaim for her not to kill him. And the thought of kidnapping on the show was an odd tidbit to uh, be in there. But I had to continue. Sadly, I didn't make it past episode two. Day eight. There was a gap due to a break for a while. I pursued my interest in finding any contact with crew members or cast members aside from Jane and Jody. I managed to find Mr. Walter Shea, who was a stagehand on the show. I managed to write this letter. Dear Mr. Shea, my name is Mike, and I'm writing a book entitled Candle Cove Experiences, Tales of the Laughing Stock. I'm interviewing whatever remaining crew and cast there are from the show. I was wondering if we could arrange a possible meeting with one another, or an actual interview. Of course, if that's alright with you, I can be contacted at the Nahomo Motel address. Thank you for your time. I received a letter sometime later. Dear Mike, you may be the dumbest person I have ever met. Why in the hell would you dare to bring up such a subject that has haunted me and everyone else on that show? Do you know the absolute tragedy that has accumulated from that? But it's also a way to get things off of my chest from it. I will meet you for an interview, but what I say about that show is the 100% truth I witness. You must not judge what I will say. If you do, I'll make sure that your journey will end with me. Enclosed is a card for where to meet me and at what time. I am not a snobbish man, but I won't do this again. Sincerely, Walter Shea. Day 15. I met with Walter Shea later on within the week. Having to time it right, I left after day 10 for Tulsa. It took some time to watch the other episode, but I managed. They did seem darker. As Jane had stated before, some of them are getting hard to watch. But I have to keep up with watching. The infamous To Grind Your Skin episode came on. That was the worst. It's one thing with a shitty motel TV that makes every program look like watching something from the 70s. It's another when the damn tape keeps jumping and staticking out every two minutes. I felt like those people trying to watch, you know, porn on their old boxes, if you know what I mean. Scramblers. Anyhow, I got to meet him where he wanted. He came in on a wheelchair, explaining how he was paralyzed. Okay, now, Mr. Shea, you said you have some information? Yeah. That whole damn show is a curse. What do you mean by that? You only could dream of what I mean. It's exactly how I said it. That show is a curse. I don't understand, really. I broke my leg on that show when a damn ladder fell off and smashed on my leg after I fell. I felt something when that hit. Like something pushed that ladder down. Then the episodes got darker. There were two episodes that never aired in season two. Those two were the worst of the worst. What happened? That Grimes in one episode has Janice, implied of course, to be cannibalized by the skin taker in a dream. Another one was to reveal that Nathan had been kidnapped and turned into a part of a cape for that bastard. Hell, Grimes wanted to fucking have Janice killed and skinned alive on camera. The end of the series was to continue with Melrose winding up in the world looking for Janice. Me and the cast had to make sure that that never happened, so we shot those ideas down every time. This pissed him off. I think that's why he did that in the final episode. You know, the screaming episode. You mean, you mean he wanted to show a little girl being skinned alive? Yes, and that fucker is a monster too. He didn't vanish. I'll tell you something that I have never told anyone. Go on. 
After we finished filming that episode, I went back to get something of mine. I saw Grimes pleading to the set pieces, as if they were all alive. He was pleading that he did his job right, he made sure. He started ripping his hair and teeth out, screaming, trying to get whatever it was away from killing him. He fell backwards and hung himself on a cord, the sound of his neck snapping. God, it still haunts me. They said he just vanished. You're stating he lost it and accidentally killed himself? Yes! Now, I knew something horrible did happen. It, it was freaking me out now, and I wanted to stop, but I had to know what happened to Grimes. They never found the body. I got rid of it. I couldn't let them think that he just wanted to make things happen to himself. I had to do something. Out of the decency of my being, at least. I buried him. I took his old lanky body out to the woods behind the studio and I buried him. I told myself there was nothing to fear but fear itself. But there was something there. I walked back to the studio and I felt something eerie present in the skin taker puppet. Like it was watching me. I got out of there as quick as I could. Sometime later, that damned final episode aired and I will never forget what I saw. It was horrible. I was afraid of the show now. It was lying ahead of the episodes for me. I had some more stops to go, but I advised myself that if things get too deep, I'll stop there and work with what I have. Day 19. It's been hard to sleep. I keep having the same nightmare, the skin taker, coming at me, threatening to grind my skin. It's hard to wake up to just static, because I can hear the fucking theme song in my head every time I do. I gave up a little, but I have to keep going. I made a list of people who claim to have items from the series. Some proved to be idiots who made the items themselves. Indications were of the modern look to it. However, there were some who did have some items. The items I've gotten so far are listed. One of the skin takers, glass eyes. The arm of Pirate Percy. The hat, albeit somewhat in tatters, of the skin taker. One of the eyes of Horace Horrible. Tooth belonging to the laughing stock. The most unique item I found, and I swear to you, I found this one at a house in Missouri. The original owner, a man named Kyle Bartlett, his daughter Judith, was nice enough to show me part of a collection he had. He had the original skin taker's head. Now I thought it was a fake since the jaw was intact, whereas Jane stated that the jaw was partially torn off. As it turned out, Kyle was one of the crewmen on the show. He loved the skin taker as a villain. When he found that it was so destroyed, he put much time inserting the jaw back in its place. I asked to have it. She denied the request. I did see that it was missing one eye, and its famed hat. I brought these items back and put them inside myself. The head is now complete, but she allowed no photography or video to be made, stating that her father wouldn't want his favorite to be spoiled. She sounded like a mother to a child. I had to keep up. My search led me to New York, where one Mr. Michael Collin lived. The very same Michael Collin who voiced the skin taker on the show. The same Michael Collin whose son, Trevor Collin, was murdered in the fall of 1981. Meeting him was hard. He wanted nothing to do with this, but I had to interview him. Really, I did. He refused for some time until he did decide to. 
Hello there, Mr. Colin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi there. I'm sorry about this. Must not be really sorry to make a man who lost his son ten years after that goddamn episode had aired. You know the nightmares still haunt me. I did not know that. They have. Every night I can see that episode playing in my head. I'm sorry about your son and the nightmares. He took a shot of Jack Daniels and he said, Don't be. Not your fault this happened. My wife left me three years after he passed on. I had a dream the night, the very night it happened. It was the skin taker holding a knife, chasing him and brutally murdering him. It's odd that he was in a neighborhood where a local gang known as the Walking Skulls just so happened to be in. But they don't use knives in their crimes. So it was someone else. I never knew that. Never asked me to tell you. And that damn episode screwed my voice up. Which is why I sound so different than how I should. I'm sorry to hear that. Understand, you see, Grimes wanted the show to be dark. I thought he was nuts. I didn't want to do the Grinder Skin episode at all since I read the damn script. He threatened to fire me and I couldn't do that. I had a wife and a kid on the way. I couldn't lose work like this, so I did it. Unfortunately. Uh, I see. What happened the night the last episode premiered? He sighed. Took another snort of the jack. And told me. After that damned episode, I got the hell out of there. I went directly home, had to get all that we could. Grabbed my wife and my infant son and got the hell out of town. I left that damn place with dignity and got to a nearby township. I had the misfortune to be in the hospital in time for that final fucking episode to air. I had no choice but to watch it. And I regret doing so. God. I'm so sorry to hear that. If you want to, I could leave here. We could finish. Sounds good. I, I, I'm sorry. I just can't do this. I'm just... If you want to, I could leave here. Or we could finish if you'd like for it to. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I left him there. Crying. Actually regretting that I shouldn't have left him. I wish that I didn't. Day 27. I was reading the newspaper, and I skimmed the obituaries. I'm unfortunate to say that Mr. Michael Collin committed suicide some time ago. He shot himself in the head. He left a suicide note, and the NYPD stated that it was a letter to me. It had my name and address on it. Dear s I'm sorry to announce that by the time you read this, I'll be gone. It's much harder for me to deal with it, but last night's dream was the final straw. The skin taker came to me in that damned hat, stating that my son has a special place now. I saw a part of my boy's face on the upper right side of his top hat, looking at me with a glassy kind of stare. A single tear rolled down his face as I heard him screaming in agony. It broke my heart. I can't take the dreams anymore. I can't handle it and I want you to understand that you mustn't go on. Jody told me about your interview with her and she is planning on coming to New York for the funeral. I told her that she should forget about it, but since you came around it's been harder for her to forget it. I have to cease this. I'm so sorry. I really am. Sincerely, Michael Colin. Because of this letter, the death 
of this man and the nightmares that I've trudged up. I'm ceasing this project and I'm going home. It's unfortunate to have to quit this being... I was far ahead in it, but... It's the right thing to do. Day 30. My name is D he was a close friend of mine and he asked for me to post it here. Recently he killed himself. Or was a homicide. I'm not so sure. Police said that he was working on something, but when they were interviewed or questioned, they never said a word. Because they knew better than to rat him out and trudge up more nightmares for themselves. It was a wonderful man in life. His girlfriend, who is expecting a baby sometime within the year, is broken up about this. I'm sorry to say that in his message to me, he wrote that he met with one final person after the Michael Collin interview. He stated that it was a man named Adrian Grimes, Emerson Grimes' nephew. He has asked for me to put the interview on here. This interview was made via telephone. Is this Adrian Grimes? This is he. May I ask what this is about? This is about the show, Candle Cove. Uh, that show? Yeah. Look, I don't know who this is, but my uncle has been dead for years. His body was never found, and I swear to you, if this is some prank, it's not funny. It's not a prank, at all. I swear. <sighs> Look, you want to know about that show? My uncle was a sick man. He told me about it, and I watched it. Now I will tell you that every single person on that show is in their own place on it. I, however, want nothing to do with the show. I got to see the making of one episode, alright? One episode! It never got aired, and I hope it never will, either. Season 2? You meaning episode 5 or, or 6? What or... the hell are you talking about? No, this happened after the season ended. New director... I can't remember the name. It was supposed to be the season 3 starter. I was invited to be a character on the show. My father took advantage of it, and since then, I hate all of the show because my fucked up uncle was a part of it. Now leave me alone.